lots of trouble, right? Sometimes we let the mouth run off too much uh, because the, the mouth, the fool invites trouble and the fool is annoyed very easily and it shows immediately. We're seeing a lot of this go on today, the way things are going. And finally, a fool lacks moral, a moral compass, a moral reasoning. A fool will mock and make amends, not make amends for a sin. But uh, it's different. They're like a, a hapless animal just doing whatever they feel like doing. So we need to understand that there is a difference between a fool and a simple one. The simple one is a gullible. In other words, he just falls for anything that comes his way. So there is a difference between the fool. The fool lacks a moral compass. And the simple one is just gullible, simple-minded, and will believe anything that's said to it. So these are the two things that I wanted you to understand uh, between the difference between a foolish man and a simple one. And it says, wrath kills a foolish man, and envy will slay a simple one. So... It's the first thing we're going to see is we see the discomfort, the discomfort of destruction. How many of y'all ever done foolish things? <laughs> right. And it's because we didn't think about it, we didn't act on it, you know, or maybe we knew better but we thought we could get away with something. But it always comes back to bite you, doesn't it? There's always, there is a destruction uh, and a discomfort that happens to the one who's foolish who doesn't seem to think things through, who, who doesn't think what is the consequence of this that is happening? What am I doing here? Uh, and, and I tell you what, there's been decisions I've made in my life that were foolish, foolish decisions. And, and uh, I, I acted, I reacted upon lacking on moral compass more than anything. But I'm going to tell you the good Lord, still there's hope, there's hope. <laughs> Because the good Lord can come to us. Amen. He can help us. And he, he, does, he, he does not. The fool does not have all the facts. He'll make a decision. Uh, even when things don't seem to be right. He'll make a decision. And that decision may create some bad consequences. In Proverbs 18.13 it says, He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and a shame to him. So someone who makes a decision before they know the whole fact of the matter. Now wrath and envy will kill a fool for two reasons. Number one, the wrath uh, and uh, when we display and unleash our temper then there is a lot of damage done. How many of you have reacted to temper? Boy my wife has. No. <laughs> oh, there, there, there goes the mouth. <laughs> But, no, I, I, you know, there, there's times that w when we hear something, we'll get mad before we know all the facts on anything. Listen, be slow to anger, be quick to hear, and try to understand what's going on. And, and I want to tell you, do you see a lot of, I want to say, simple ones being manipulated by the media today? Yes. They're reacting as soon as they hear something without knowing the full facts, without knowing the truth. And I want to tell you, it will lead to destruction. Not only their destruction, but it could destroy their families as well. So we need to, uh, before we get angry about something, see the truth, understand the truth. And I want to tell you, by the time, here's what I've always said about anger. You need to count to ten before you get mad. And how do we count to ten? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It's a good way to count to ten. Puts everything back in perspective. So before you react to something, Think it through. And, and it's, it's real important. Anger, it, it can make you bitter. Have you ever seen someone who's just bitter in the soul? And it's because a lot of times they're angry. 
they're angry about something and it ends up being embitterment and it, it, it can be just like a, a splinter in your finger that you can't get out it just always hurts and it's always there uh, Hebrews 12 15 looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up can cause trouble and by this many become defiled be careful about it don't let that anger rise up in you now listen Job had every right to be upset didn't he he had lost everything that he'd ever had from from this side of heaven it would make me upset if everything would have happened but I'm going to tell you if you'll, if you'll resort to God, give yourself to Him, and say, Lord, I don't know what's going on here, but you're going to have to take control of it. Take control of me. Pray about it. Let Pray that He shows you the answer. Pray that He shows you the wisdom, that He opens your spiritual eye to be able to see. I know there's some reason this is happening to me. Please, Lord, show what you want me to learn through this through the trials that I've had to experience in my own life, that's one of my prayers. Show me, Lord, what you want me to know. Show me. And I want to tell you, is he faithful? Yes. Yes, he is. And you know, Job in his own way was asking God to show him. But he, he had gotten to the point, listen, everything he held dear to him was gone. Everything, all his children, all his status quo, everything was gone. And you become bitter. But remember who you are. Come to your senses, as, as the Bible says that we need to do. Come to our sense before we react. And then envy and jealousy. It talks about this because it makes a person bitter and angry. How many of you ever seen some a jealous person or an envy an envious person? They're never happy, are they? They're always upset. Proverbs fourteen thirty: A sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. We need not be. You know. You know the one thing I love about my wife is she's not jealous. And I'm not jealous of her. There's absolute trust works in our relationship. Absolute trust. Doesn't matter if we was a thousand miles away. There's absolute trust. Because we are one another. That's the way love works, doesn't it? And if we have love for others, we won't have that, that feeling. We won't feel jealous. We won't be envy of someone else being succeeding. You know what a Christian should do when someone... Uh, uh, see someone that's succeeding yay that's wonderful for you you know don't wish it bad for him and good for you be encouraging and say I'm so glad you're doing well you know it just tickles me to death if I can see my brothers and sisters succeed that's really what's in count and you know where I really want you to succeed I want you to succeed in spiritual matters and grow in the spiritual aspect of Christ. Listen, we need to be building our riches for where? Heaven. Not necessarily down here. But I'm going to tell you, when you let God bring your riches, when you let God bring your wealth, not yourself, you will be blessed by it. And it won't mean that much to you. It's just a tool to be able to further the kingdom. That's what it's about. And when God has your heart, He's got everything else you have. And you just understand that it's all been given to you. But jealousy is even more unbearable than anger and wrath. And Proverbs 27, 3 and 4, A stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than both of them. Wrath is cruel and anger a torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? So we need to understand our hearts. Walk with a trusting heart. A trusting heart. You know, it, it, it's, it's like 
whenever I learned this, it was like God started taking the weights off of my shoulders and my head and everything else. I was free, free. And that's, what, that's the liberty, that's some of the liberty that we can find in Christ. It's when we have that freedom in Christ that we can cast envy and jealousy away. And wrath and anger, it has no place in our heart. We're going to walk. Listen, life, as we get older, life has enough of its challenges. Wouldn't you say, Brother Everett? <laughs> But we've, we've got to continue on. And when we're in Christ, it makes life so much easier because we know that one day we're going to be with Him. One day it might be not far away. But it's still most wonderful that we know that we've got a relationship. And it helps unload all the burdens that we can have bearing right here of this world. And we are free from the chains and the bondage of this world when we are walking in Christ. Amen? So we need to have that. Now, there is a disaster. The disaster of the fool. The fool may experience temporary success. You know, there was a one time that I thought I was a big fish in a big ocean. And I found out I was just a little fish in a little ocean. <laughs> I wasn't that big of a deal. But I had put all my eggs in who I was making myself to be in this world. Oh, I was going to be successful. I didn't realize I was being a fool. And it led to temporary success. But I'm even more grateful that God was able to use it to bring me to Him. As to where I found Him. And not just who I was in this world. And listen, I was fooling myself. I was fooling myself. The true success is when God brings that success to you. And you realize it and you're living for Him. And whatever you have, whatever you have, whoever you are, it's all based upon His relationship that we have with Him. And that's wonderful to have. The, uh, the uh, Proverbs 10.8, uh, The wise in heart will receive commands, but a prating fool will fall. If we are wise in our heart, we will hear the commands of the Lord. If we were wise in heart, we will hear the commands of those that are over us in authority. Solomon said, The prosperity of fools destroy them for turning away from wisdom. Proverbs 132, for the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. You see, it is our choice. Each one of us can choose. We can choose wisdom, the wisdom of God, or the foolishness of man. And listen, the best wisdom of man is foolishness unto God. Wouldn't you say? Yes. I mean, when we think we're getting so wise and so smart, God has a way of humbling us <laughs> and walking to that place. So, people who say God sends people to hell are foolish. I'm going to tell you who sends them to hell themselves. They're the one that makes the choice. And the worst thing you can do is to reject Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That is the worst thing you can do. Now listen, I'm going to tell you, you can say, no, I made a decision. I have made my decision to become a Christian. And you're still right there. You're right there where you made the decision. You hadn't made one step past that point. Did you know you're still rejecting that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior? You may be claiming Him in name, but you are not walking with Him in truth. Because I'm going to tell you the whole thing about Christ, being in Christ, is the journey that you have with Christ. How many of you will say amen to that? 
He reveals himself to us over and over and over again, the different nature of Christ who he is. He is our Redeemer. He is our Deliverer. He is our Guide. He's our Wisdom. He's our Love. He's our Protector. He's our Philosopher. He gives us reasoning. He shows us what is right and what is wrong. He is faithful to do so. Proverbs 13, 20 says this, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. My mama always said, <laughs> Choose your friends wisely. Choose your friends wisely. We need to be careful about who we call friend. Now, as a minister, I tell you what, I've had to wade in the den of thieves. I've had to walk in there. I've had to be around them. But my God was with me every step of the way. And he helped me bring people out of that mire to the truth. But that's when God equips you and he gives you the gifts to be able to deal with the ministry that he's been assigned you. But I want to tell you, we need to be careful with our friends. And matter of fact, let you be the influence. Don't let them influence you. As a believer, you be the influencer. You know, uh, we have teachers here. I had uh, wonderful teachers when I was young. And uh, I don't know if there's so much of a different mindset than what they are today, but it was a different time. And uh, they would, there would be times that my, mo my mother would receive calls at home from my teacher. <laughs> and, and they would say, I'm real concerned about Ron. He's, he's hanging around some bad boys. Be, be careful. Just you might talk to him, you know. And and it was it was so. And these these boys, they yes, they were trouble. They had some problems. But then later later on that same school year, my mother received another call from that same teacher. And she said, you know, she said Ron's made the difference in their lives instead of them making the difference in him. He's helped change them. So I, I didn't know what I was doing as a boy, but I did know the things that my mama taught me, <laughs> right? And so, but, and, and teachers, I do hope you're still like that as to where you can, if you see that, show concern for that child. Show, show concern. It's so important that people care, especially for those who can't care for themselves. Amen? You know what breaks my heart today is I see children at home, they have no food, that our schools are having to feed them. That's a sad state of affairs. It's a sad state of affairs that the church is allowing this to happen. We need to be stepping up, right? We need to be touching those parents' lives as to where they would want to see to it that they take care of their folks, their children, their family. It's our job. If you know Christ, if you know someone, teach them. Influence them. Be the influencer in their lives. There's too many people that's walking around with foolish intentions. And too many simple ones that's being led astray. The dependents of a fool are oppressed. Foolish behavior does not only affect your own life, it affects those who are dependent upon you. Proverbs eleven twenty nine. He who, he who troubles his own house will inherit the wind, and the fool will be the servant to the wise of heart. Don't oppress those you love by making foolish mistakes. Be the best you can be for your family and for those you love. 
It's never too late to turn away from sin and turn back to Christ. How many of you agree to that? I tell you what, in the least of my life, after I made all the mistakes, I had destroyed my family. God gave me new life. He gave me new purpose. He showed me a way to be able to help influence my children in a positive manner. If you choose to live your life without Christ and live in sin, you will affect those around you. We are a witness one way or the other, folks. It's never too late to turn away from sin and turn back. Joshua 24, 14 and 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth. I say that again. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and of Egypt. Serve the Lord. If it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in which the land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. It's your choice. It's your choice. You can put a stop to foolishness in this world by making the right kind of influence to those that are around you. And then there's the devourment of a fool's wealth and assets. When you have a careless decision of a foolish person, it leads to loss of possessions. Proverbs 21.20 There is a desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. Listen, Eliphaz had the right points. He understood he was using everything right that was coming from God, but he was implying it upon Job in a wrong manner. We have to be careful about judging other people. But if you'll follow the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will show you the right answer. And you won't be so quick to judge. Listen, the Word of God, don't let it be reserved in the weeds. Don't be so caught up with life that the Word of God is not precious to you. Matthew 13, 22 and 23. We're skipping one, brother. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of the riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives the seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces it, some hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Folks, there are fools, there are simple ones, and there are wise ones. Let Christ be your wisdom. Let him lead you and guide you in the right way. I don't want to ever have to see you experience the hurt that a foolish person will lose. And we see a lot of them. You can see them on the corners of the streets and they're hurting, they're struggling. I've been in the prisons where I've seen some that were so sorry and they could tell you what they've done to get there and they were so sorry for the decisions and the choices that they made. And there's nothing worse than hearing those clanging bars behind you when you get locked in with the prisoners and you're a preacher and you don't know who's going to come up. But I'm going to tell you, there's good people and there's bad people in jail. And all of them, some of them made bad choices. Some of them were influenced wrong. Some of them were foolish, some of them were simple ones. 
Can God save a foolish person? Absolutely. Absolutely. All we have to do is decide and declare Him to be our Lord and Savior. And I made the statement a while ago that so many people are still right where they were when they accepted Christ. Listen, this is a journey. It's a journey of faith. And each and every day as your needs change, so does the Savior change with you. In other words, he begins to show you different things. He reveals himself in a different nature. But he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be there for you. But you are missing things in life if you don't let God become more a part of your life through his son, Jesus Christ. You will see miracles that you would have never seen before. You will see God's hand at work in your own life. You will see choices that were changed by decisions that you made which benefited you. And you will be able to look back and see where God led you every step of the way to where you're at today. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I know because it's happened to me. Let God be a part of your life. Let him lead you and guide you. Seek the wisdom of God, which is the foolishness of man. They can't understand it. But we walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Amen? So I, I ask you right now, search your heart. And I'm praying that the Lord is searching your heart. I want you to grow in him. Stand tall. For you are a child of the King. Let's all bow our heads, please. Father, I just thank you so much for this time that we have. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I pray right now that by your Spirit, you will search the hearts that are here. That you will lead them to an understanding to know you more, Father. To grow. So we won't be considered foolish simple. Help us be able to walk more in your wisdom, in your power, and in your love. But if there's one heart here today that needs to make a choice, a decision, I pray that you will call upon them. Draw them to you. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.